Hello, fellow explorers. Welcome to this week's Positivity Pop-Up. My name is Siren Murr, and I am your host today. It's a little later in the day than we usually go live with our Positivity Pop-Up. You just never can tell with us, I suppose. <laughs> I might be having a couple of friends join me today. So we'll give them a minute to hop on. But my name is Murr, and I've curated a collection of stories for you this week to help you pile on a bunch of good stuff and dilute all of that bad stuff that's around us. So um, welcome to the show. And uh, hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Siren Sara. <laughs> It's so good to hear your voice finally today. <laughs> Yours too. Yeah, I had um, Mackenzie's graduation party last night, and I had been putting the the show together all week long, but I just didn't have it quite ready. And I was so exhausted when I got home at nearly midnight last night that I decided I was not going to attempt to try to get up and do this positivity pop-up this morning. So I, I put together a much better show with the extra time and I appreciate your flexibility. Absolutely. I am going to uh, jump over and let Siren Jess know. I think uh, she should be able to get in now. I hope so. I hope she can. So we're, because we're doing this so late in the day, it's 530 Eastern time. Uh, Jess, who lives all the way out in Kauai on a in a very different time zone, is able to join us. We think it's only 11 there, but she's never done it before. And if you guys are regular listeners of the Positivity Pop-Up, then you might remember how much trouble we had figuring this puppy out. So she's right there trying to figure it out for the first time. <laughs> so while Sarah is um, trying to get Jess on as a co-host, I just want to remind everyone today, Sunday, June 18th, we have, you know, of course, it's National Everything Day. But first and foremost, Happy Father's Day to all those dads and stepdads and moms being both mom and dad. We hope your day has been amazing and relaxing. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Yeah, Happy Father's Day, everyone. It's also National Go Fishing Day, which sounds like a great way to celebrate Father's Day. I mean, if you fish, I personally don't care for fishing. <laughs> There's, all, there's always a national something day, right? Always national something day. And it's also clean your aquarium day. That seems fitting for national go fishing day. And it's also international day for countering hate speech. In 2009, after the National Hispanic Media Coalition um, outlined that hate speech had four specific parts, the... Um, law changed and hate speech has a new definition. So it has to follow these four parts. It has to have number one, false facts, number two, flawed argumentation, number three, diverse language, and number four, dehumanizing metaphors. Um, and also hate speech was not limited to inciting violence, but also included an atmosphere that could encourage violence. So there are a few ways that we can celebrate that. National Day by doing some research, find out what constitutes hate speech and what does not, learn how freedom of speech differs from hate speech. Um, number two, you could speak up whenever you see instances of hate speech, make people aware that hate speech is a crime with repercussions, and number three, be mindful. Always be mindful of what you say, never say something that can hurt people even in jest. So there we go. Oh, I hear a crow. This means we must have Siren Jess. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Thanks for joining us today. The chickens are saying happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Hi, Jess. So, I tried to mute myself, but it told me I had to verify my email first. So I'm trying to verify my email so I can mute. So that's chickens funny. don't interrupt your show. <laughs> Well, maybe they'll just add to the charm of that is the positivity pop-up. So before we, there are a couple of uh, 
big things happening this week, but before we talk about those, let's cover a couple of stories. The first story is from an article published by The Guardian. Um, we learn in this article about a company named EarthCore. Is it EarthCore or EarthCorp? Is the P silent? I don't know. I've always heard mm -hmm. it. I go silent. for silent. The core is usually silent. All right. So a company named EarthCore, who in, they installed two vending machines in Japan's, that's Japan. I feel like I'm mumbling real fast. Their western coastal city of Aiko. It's near one of the country's many evacuation sites. But Japan has the most seismic activity of any country in the world. And experts predict that there's a 60% likelihood of a mega quake occurring there in the next 20 years. And they say there's a 90% chance of a mega quake in the next 40 years. So it, there, it's just a matter of time. So these vending machines that Earth Core has installed, they contain over 300 drinks and 150 food items, which, and also that includes dietary supplements. Um, you can pay for these items at any time, but when a natural disaster strikes, the machines automatically unlocked and their contents will be free for anyone who needs them, which is a really cool invention. Wow. So, so Earth, I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's very cool. So EarthCore, they hope to um, be able to install more of these machines across the country. And officials in Japan think that these types of machines could help sustain people who are experiencing um, hardships due to natural disasters. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing. So I also came across a video on Reddit while I was doing research for this article. And it shows a man... All right, so first of all, I want you to picture like a row of chairs. And actually, I think they were more like standalone chairs. The first time I saw the video, I thought it was like that they were all attached. But I think they're individual chairs. But on the seat of a chair, there's like this little knob. And he turned the knob and this the back of the chair kind of flopped over. So it was essentially disconnected from the rest of the chair. So then he pulls the back of the chair up. And underneath, what it was underneath the uh, seat of the chair, but still attached to the back now, is a helmet, like a hard hat. So in the event of an earthquake, the chairs turn into hard hats to help people protect their heads and shield their backs from falling debris. That's kind of super cool and super creepy all at the same time. I all at the same time. So yeah, it's like watching a, a, a video, like a movie. Like yeah, a futuristic movie where your chair just all of a sudden. It's like the Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> the creativity of some people, it just blows my mind. That, that was, I thought that was pretty fascinating. Yeah, yep. Someone had to think of that. That's just insane. Right. I know. So brilliant. So our next story, every time I read it, it makes me cry. So we'll see how I get through it today. <laughs> I've read it a lot. Maybe maybe I'm uh, numb to it now. But this is a story that comes from Fox 19 here in Cincinnati. A Thomas Moore softball player, she was treated with such kindness and empathy at a game this season. Her name is Becca Moen, and she plays for the uh, Thomas Moore Saints. And at a recent game, she approached the plate for her turn at bat and um, her team at the time was down by three runs. It was the final inning. The bases were loaded. Becca hit herself a grand slam that would win the game for her team. But as she approached second base, she heard her hamstring pop oh. twice. And if you don't understand the rules of softball, and I'm sure it's the same with baseball, Becca's home run is only a home run if she can make it around the bases, which oh she couldn't. God. Yeah. She was in agony and she couldn't even walk on her own, let alone run. So Ashley Evans, she was a player for the opposing team, the Cumberland University. She said, quote, I see her getting back up and she starts to run again and she falls over again. I'm like, OK, something is seriously wrong. And then her teammate, J.C. Hatfield, said it was her moment and I don't feel like it was our place to take it away from her. So I think we just helped her through it. And then Ashley says, at that point, 
I started running in and we carried her up one on each side and walked her around the bases. So these two players from the opposite team scooped this girl up and made sure that she could make it around the rest of the bases and eventually to home plate so that her grand slam would count. Wow. They, I know. And they, and they lost the game because of it, but they said that it was a moment that felt bigger than that game. Um, yeah, Ashley said, what really sticks in my mind is that her coach stopped us and shook our hand and told us that's a class act. And everyone was just super thankful. It felt like it was just the right thing to do. Becca, the interplayer, said, yeah, this it probably is the top moment I've had, not just because of the game winning Grand Slam, but like showing what this sport can do to people. And then Jay-Z said, you hear this all the time from athletes, but it's more than a game. And I think that's just another great lesson I've learned through softball and I hope we've influenced other people as well. So that was pretty awesome. I did make it through without crying, but I broke up. <laughs> well done. Well done. For the first time hearing it, that was, a, that's definitely a tear jerker, but that's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, there's video of the, uh, of the event on Fox 19's website. I think it's fox19 now.com, but I'll put a link to the story in our description. Our next story comes to us from the New York Times. This is about a boy named Preston Mutanga. He's a 14-year-old boy living in Toronto, and he was asked to animate a scene in the new movie Across the Spider-Verse. So Preston likes to dabble in graphic design, and he's been using his dad's old computers to work on fun animated scenes. He uses a software program called Blender. His dad introduced him to it, and then he just started watching YouTube videos and kind of taught himself how to how to do all this stuff. Well, back in December, he recreated the trailer for Across the Spider-Verse, making it look like the Lego movie. All the characters in the buildings had been transformed into those famous bricks. And the remake, which was just incredible, it gained so much attention and it eventually reached Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. They're the directors of the Lego movie and two of the writer producers of Spider-Verse. So after they decided to include a segment in a Lego universe into the movie, Christina Steinberg, another one of the film's producers, contacted Mutanga and asked him if he wanted to animate it. Um, Christopher Miller told the New, York, the New York Times on a video call, quote, we found out that it was a 14-year-old kid who made it, and we were like, this looks incredibly sophisticated for a non-adult, non-professional to have made it. It blew us all away, including some of the best animators in the world. How cool is that? Can you imagine being that kid? Yeah, that's great. I wish I was that creative. That's awesome. <laughs> right? So Preston's parents were skeptical at first. I mean, imagine Sony Pictures reaching out to your 14-year-old kid and offering them a job as an animator. I'd be a little skeptical myself. Um, but they did some research and they learned that it was a real offer. His dad built Preston a new computer with state-of-the-art graphics, with a state-of-the-art graphics card so that he could make the animations much quicker. Um, Preston's mom says, quote, I know Preston has a gift that was given to him by God. And once he identified that he had that gift, all we could do as parents was to nurture it and let him fly. So Preston worked real hard over spring break and in the evenings after his homework was done, of course, school first kids uh, to create the scene. And there was a lot of like back and forth with the producer. So it wasn't just him creating something. It was him working on a team to make sure that it was what they wanted to include in their movie. And um, his scene is shown pretty early in the film. It's a, uh, I guess they sort of drift off into another into another uh, dimension or something. And it's a tribute to the Lego movie. It depicts buildings and characters that look like they came from Legoland, much like Preston's original recreation of the film's trailer. Um, Miller saw young Preston's contribution to Across the Spider-Verse not only as a testament to to the democratization of filmmaking, but also to the artist's perseverance, dedicated intensive time and effort to this animation, which is, quote, not ever fast or easy to make, Miller says. 
And Lord told the New York Times that the Lego movie is inspired by people making films with Lego bricks at home. That's what made us want to make the movie. Then this idea in Spider-Verse is that a hero came from can come from anywhere. And here comes this heroic young person who's inspired by the movie that was inspired by people like him. It's a great job, Preston. We're, I'm pretty excited to see what the future has in store for you. Yeah, bright, bright kid, bright future. Yeah, heck, heck yeah. So all of this uh, talk about Spider-Man, man, it's got me feeling a little uh, jokey. Here we go. <laughs> Sarah and Jess, what does Peter Parker do for extra money? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Jess? Uh, rob the robbers? No, he is a web designer. Oh, oh man, we should have got that. Dad jokes for, for Father's Day. Did you guys hear the laughing, the laugh track? Yeah, that was awesome. I figured out how to use sound effects. That's awesome. <laughs> for a second, I was like, what on earth? Uh, we have that many people. Uh, oh, no, but that's an awesome soundtrack. <laughs> what did Spider-Man, or I'm sorry, why did Spider-Man do so well on his first driving test? It's because he's a great parallel Parker. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> why doesn't spider-man like to talk to bruce wayne because he has yeah. bad breath oh god <laughs> <laughs> these laugh tracks are cracking me up uh what's what outdoor sport does spider-man like I don't know what outdoor sport does Spider-Man like. Fly fishing. Oh. <laughs> I All feel right. Like one you're reaching here, Mayor. I know. One last, one last joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was me snorting. What do you get when you cross Spider-Man with an ear of corn? I don't know, but I have an interesting visual. <laughs> Cobwebs. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right so i told you earlier that there were a couple more things i wanted to share about the week ahead and the first one i want to talk about is the summer solstice it happens on wednesday june 21st so the solstice is the longest day of the year and it's the astro astrological start of summer man that word for some reason is real hard for me to say I tried it like four times a day but it's celebrated in a myriad of ways across the globe, from bonfires in Finland to the Night of San Juan in Spain, which is just a large festival to celebrate summer, to even large group yoga in Times Square in New York City. The summer solstice represents a transition from action to nourishment, which is exactly what the sun gives us during those long summer nights. And that's both to our actual crops, but also to the continual journey that we travel from darkness to light. One of the biggest annual traditions is celebrating, or I'm sorry, catching the sunset at Stonehenge, where the mysterious rock formations are placed to align perfectly with the sun. And each year, thousands of pagans and ordinary folks gather to watch the spectacular sight. Since COVID struck in 2020, though, so they weren't able to do this in person in 2020 that they, they, uh, they English heritage had to come up with a way to get visitors to have to allow visitors to still experience that sunrise. So now it is a live stream friends, and we will put a link to that live stream. It's going to be on YouTube. You can actually click the link now and there's like a little countdown, but it starts a few hours before sunrise. Um, so you can click that link and watch the sunrise over Stonehenge without leaving the comfort of your home. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm yeah. To check that out. All, yeah, I'm excited about that too. The bucket list is to uh, actually be right there at the stones. I've driven past them numerous times, but 
never been right there. I feel like it would be a great place for a wedding. What do you oh, yeah. I feel like that needs to be wedding number 13. Oh, yeah. Do it, Zara. All right. I'll mark it as such. All right. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I want to see that place in person as well. So English Heritage, they're an organization that manages more than 400 historical sites, and you can check out their website. They will tell you, Sara, how to visit Stonehenge. I will be on it. All right. And then the next day I want to talk about is a pretty important one. Juneteenth. It's celebrated on June 19th every year. So that's tomorrow if you're listening to this today. Texas was the first state to recognize June 19 as a holiday, and that happened in 1980. And then in 2021, Joe Biden signed legislation making Juneteenth a federal holiday, which is why today is second Saturday for me and everyone who works for an employer who recognizes federal holidays. Um, just to educate all of you, today is second Saturday. Tomorrow is false Sunday and Tuesday is just Tuesday. Um, but I digress. So the federal government has only recognized Juneteenth as a holiday since 2021, but African Americans in the United States have been celebrating Juneteenth since the late 1800s. And here's why. So on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which gave Black people in this country their freedom. However, it wasn't until June 19th, 1865, that's two and a half years later, that the Union General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas to spread the news to enslaved people in the Confederate state that the Civil War had ended and that they were free. One of General Granger's first orders of business was to read to the people of Texas General Order Number 3, which began most significantly with, quote, The people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves, and the connection here to for existing between them becomes that between employer and hired laborer. Um, I mean, we know that declaring slaves as equals didn't automatically make people accept that fact. And it's been a hard road for black people in this country to get equal rights. And that's a fight that's still being fought today. Um, but now we officially celebrate Juneteenth, every June 19th. And it's also called Juneteenth Independence Day, Freedom Day, or Emancipation Day. Okay. So there we are all celebrate. Heck yeah. There are lots of ways to celebrate. Um, the New York Times reported that early Juneteenth celebrations involved prayer and family gatherings and later included annual pilgrimages to Galveston by former enslaved people and their families. Um, in 1872, a group of African-American ministers and businessmen in Houston purchased 10 acres of land and created Emancipation Park, which was intended to hold the city's annual Juneteenth celebration. And it is every year there. Um, today, while some celebrations take place among families and backyards where food is an integral element, some cities like Atlanta and Washington, they hold larger events, including like parades and festivals with residents, local businesses and more. What was that noise? doing dishes or something. <laughs> so here in Cincinnati, um, our local NPR station interviewed three local chefs and in the, it was for Cincinnati edition and they explore the history and traditions of Juneteenth through food, along with recipes that you can make with your family for the holiday weekend. And I'll post those three recipes that were shared, but by the guests. So the guests and their recipes were Aunt Flora of, she's the owner of Aunt Flora's Cobbler Pie Company. She shared her recipe for no mess key lime pie. That's what her and her family like to eat on Juneteenth. Um, Mona Bronson Fuqua, CEO and chef of Je ne sais Fuqua LLC, 
Um, she shares a watermelon rash salad with lime berry dressing. And Jeffrey Harris, the owner and executive chef of Nolia Kitchen, shared his recipe for southern baked beans. I just finished breakfast, but all of those sound delicious. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm really Yeah, I know. So Marky Mark, he's making the no-bake key lime pie for dessert tonight to celebrate Juneteenth with the boys before we go back to their moms. And I'm looking forward to having some of that after we wrap up this show tonight. So I want to end this week's positivity pop-up by sharing some facts about the Juneteenth flag. So the flag is a brainchild of activist Ben Haith. He's also the co-founder of National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation. He created the flag in 1997 with the help of a Boston-based illustrator, Lisa Jeannie Graff. The flag was revised in 2000 into the version that we know today. And seven years later, in 2007, the date, June 19, 18, 1865, was added, uh, commemorating the day that General Granger told our told the enslaved African Americans that they were free. The background of the flag is blue on top and red on the bottom, and the two colors are separated in sort of a curved manager, and that curvature represents a new horizon, the opportunities and promise that lay ahead for Black Americans. At the center of the flag is a white star, which has a dual meaning. It represents Texas, the Lone Star State, of course, the last state where slaves were freed, but it also represents the freedom of African Americans in all 50 states. And there's a bursting outline around the star that is meant to, um, it's inspired by a nova, which is a term that astronomers use to, to mean a new star. So on the Juneteenth flag, it represents a new beginning for African Americans. And then finally, the red, white, and blue colors of the flag represent the American flag, a reminder that slaves and their descendants were and are Americans. And while African Americans today are still fighting for equality and justice, Ben Haith says, those colors symbolize the continuous commitment of people in the United States to do better and to live up to the American ideal of liberty and justice for all. Well, that's great. I didn't know any of that. That's excellent stuff to know the day before Juneteenth. Yeah. It it is really cool. I um, work for Fifth Third Bank. I've never actually said that out loud on a podcast, but I do. <laughs> That's who I work for. And in our headquarters in downtown Cincinnati, there is a Juneteenth um, art display in our lobby and that's open to the public and that'll be there through the 20th. So I know it's only a couple more days, but it's there for people to enjoy. And they've had some black artists coming in every day at lunch and like painting pieces like during the day, like they're, and then once their work of art is done, they put it on a, uh, they put it on display for the rest of the celebration. So it's pretty cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah, very cool. I just Googled yeah. the um, Juneteenth flag because I didn't actually know what it looked like. I mean, you were describing it, but I hadn't seen it before. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend Googling Juneteenth, fl Juneteenth flag because uh, Google does really cool animation after you do that. Oh, does it? Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Jess. We'll check that out. All right. Well, that is all I have for you guys this week. I hope you learned a few things and feel a little lighter today as a result of these uplifting stories. Yeah, that was wonderful. And, you know, I, I, I do love 730 on a Sunday morning, but I do feel like I was more alert and oriented at 530 in the afternoon. <laughs> I know. I, you know, I, the thing, the beauty of the pop-up is, I mean, pop-up is meant to be a pop-up. So whenever we feel like it, yeah. question mark, is that how I interpreted that? I love it. <laughs> I like that it wasn't 1.30 in the morning for me. True. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I even saw 1.30 in the morning. So I hear you, girl. Unless I'm Maybe if I had to get up and run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with us. And until next time, dive in, stay curious, and be happy. Bye, girls. Bye.